Hey, welcome back to the cabin. Um, I thought I'd just uh, give you an update on uh, the grow watts and my solar panels and the efficiency of them. Um, yesterday we had a really nice day and um, when the sun was directly onto the panels, um, according to the grow watt, um, they were pushing out 934 watts. So yeah, I'm really impressed with these uh, Hanwha Q cells. That's pretty good. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it get it starts to get direct sunlight um, about 11:15 in the morning um, until around 4:30. So uh, so that's about five hours. I mean. There is a couple trees I might cut down just to maybe prolong the sun on it a bit longer. Um, but uh, um, I I'll see what I'm going to do. What are you doing, chipmunk? Oi, what are you doing, mate? On my con on my conduit. You're looking for nuts. There's no nuts there, mate. Um, so yeah, I covered up some of the conduit uh, yesterday. I'll come up to the solar mount. Um, I still have to do a bit more. And I reinforce the sides of the solar panels as well. Um, I'll just come around the other side and you can have a look at front of the solar panels. Um, they're massive actually. Uh, I don't know if this video gives it any justice, but uh, they're pretty big. Um, so I might, I might just leave. I'll see what, what my um, usage is in the cabin. And if, if the four and a half, five hours of direct sunlight in the summer is enough, then I might just leave it, the trees the way they are. Or if I'm using more energy and there isn't enough sunlight on the panels, then maybe I'll consider cutting them down. Um, but I'll just monitor it and see what my usage is. And um, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but this is my solar mounts. Um, what I decided to do, I was going to use Unistrut. But when I looked at the cost of Unistrut, um, it's so expensive in Canada to buy all the components. Because initially I thought, okay, if I design a Unistrut one, I can I can manually adjust the solar panels for the season. So in the summer I can make them more, um, increase the angle upwards towards the sky and in the wintertime lower it down so um, it gets the reflection from the snow. Um, cause in the winter time, it's about probably three or four feet of snow on the ground up here. Um, you, you can't walk around. You need snowshoes up here in the winter time or a skidoo, one or the other. I don't have a skidoo, so I have to do everything with sh snowshoes and like a sort of sleigh. I pull all my gear in and stuff. Um, but yeah, what I decided to get back to the ground mount, what I decided to do in the end is just use wood. Um, and what I did is I bought these, um, these steel footings from Home Depot. They're like a U shape with a, and then it has at the bottom, it has sort of like a six inch, um, three quarter inch steel rod welded to the bottom. So what I did is this, this we're on top of a sort of a granite boulder here. And so what I decided to do was, um, I drilled right into the granite. Um, well, that was a bugger of a job to do. Um, and then I, um, I put these little footings in and then I cemented them in and then once that dried the next day I cemented the footing again up to the base of the U-joint and then I put the, the uh, 4x4 wooden posts in and then I cemented it again. Um, so it's pretty sturdy, I just need to cover everything up um, with soil. And I, I, what I did is I've got all these like granite rocks on my trail going down the hill. So I've just, what I did is just, just stack them around the base of it. And then I'm going to throw some soil on top of it. Um, but yeah, and then the only thing about this system is I use these steel bands that I bought also at Home Depot. And then I screwed them in to the, the two by fours into the four by four. So I, I don't know, that's kind of like the weakest bit here, but I used the part of the tree I cut down just for side support. I mean, it's very sturdy. It's not moving anywhere. So I, I think it'll be all right, actually. It's solid. I mean, the wires are a bit messy. I've got to tie these all up. 
uh, and I will do that with some I've got some um, tie those ties plastic ties and I'll tie them all up um, but yeah this is it I mean I'm quite happy with um, the Henwa if they're gonna be pumping out 900 watts or 934 watts when there's direct sunlight on them then that's super fine for me I mean I, I there's only just over a thousand watts the panels are what 369 a thousand and twenty I think um, I know you don't get the recommended amount anyway but um, I'm still you know it, it's still pretty good output coming from these uh, panels so I can't complain um, so yeah so I'm gonna cover this up with soil the conduit and I might cut down that tree stump as well you know, with my chainsaw um, but yeah it's pretty solid it's not moving anywhere I think this with the snow it's gonna fall down anyway when it's snowing in the winter time it should just roll off the panels um, but so uh, we'll see what you doing Mike you coming to see what I'm doing um, so yeah I'm quite happy with that um, there isn't any Sun these trees are blocking it at the moment um, but yeah so What's the next big job I'm going to be doing? Probably, um, probably just finishing up these, um, the conduit, and then I got to put the house panel on as well, just connect everything to the house so that I get my pump, water pump working in. It's a bit of a bummer really boiling a kettle to do your dishes and stuff. Uh, I just want to break my leg. Oh, Jesus, I fell. I fell off that uh, solar. When I was building the side bit, I slipped and fell off that and rolled down this granite boulder and banged my leg. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit stiff at the moment. Um, I need to get rid of those logs and then bring them over to my, um, down by my steel shed where I'm going to be splitting all my logs. That's why I tend to split them all. Um, yeah, there isn't many bugs out today. It's nice, but it's it's going to be humid today. Um, what you doing, mate? Looking for your nuts. I don't know if you can see that little culture. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to be, uh, it's going to be humid and hot today, but uh, I need to do a water run today as well and get some water for my filter system because it uh, needs filling up. But yeah, it's lovely up here. I don't know if you can hear all the birds, but I just said there's no bugs, but a mosquito just got me in the back of the leg. And I've got some, uh, I don't know if you can see down there, but there's, there's some plastic 50 gallon drums down there. And what I'm going to do um, down in the ravine there, what I'm going to do is when I build my, um, sort of lean-to woodshed. I'm going to put some eaves trough on it and collect the rainwater coming off it and then I can use that um, for my drinking water or um, I might use it for some vegetables or something if I grow some uh, some stuff next year. I'll have to, I'll have to make some raised beds because there's just no soil here because there's granite because of the geology of the area. There's probably only a couple inches of soil on top and the rest of it's just granite so I'll probably have to do a raised bed and maybe get some soil um, and then maybe I could grow something just that I don't have a lot of water up here until I can sort out the rainwater um, and then I'll have more options available to me um, I just um, I just cleaned out my composting toilet I hate doing that it's such a dirty job <laughs> But it's lasted, I think, ages, about six weeks or so before I've had to change it. So I'm quite happy with that. I bought the composting toilet about three years ago um, because I used to have an outhouse. And, uh, and it, was, it was quite a ways down there, away from the, uh, the cabin. So no one, wanted to, uh, no one wanted to use that at night time. So when my daughters came up, you know, they go, there's no way I'm coming up here unless you have a toilet inside. So... Uh, so I sorted out, I looked around, did some research and I bought a composting toilet and it works fine. It's great. Um, 
I'll show you. I'll just come in. We'll have a look, and I'll show you my composting toilet. It's a bit dark in here, um, but yeah, that's my composting toilet there. Um, it's great. I mean, it doesn't produce any horrible smells or anything. There's like a a hose that comes in and a small little fan that sucks all the the um, um, the smells out of the cabin. Um, but yeah, it's 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 fine. I mean, um, it separates the solids from the liquids, so you have to empty the liquids in the front. But I never use it. I mean, I never use this. I only use it for solids, and I I go outside when I go to the loo. Um, this is a bit of a mess because I'm cleaning up. But yeah, so um, I will. Let's have a look and see what. Uh, there isn't going to be many watts on it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, let's have a look here. There's only 20, I've only got like 24 watt load on the system. Yeah, it's pulling 136 watts at the moment. Four amps are going into the battery now and uh, 86 volts. But yeah, around 20 past 11 or so, that's when um, it gets direct sunlight. And when I looked yesterday, it said it was pulling 934 watts into the batteries, but the batteries are almost full anyway. I think they are full. Um, so really, it's just, uh, you know, I've got plenty of power up here, I think, now. So I don't think I have to worry about it. I might even get a fridge. I don't know. We'll see. With the cost of propane the way it is at the moment, it might be cheaper having an electric fridge and just using my cooker for propane. But I'll see how I get on and I'll monitor the watch.